Welcome back, everybody, to Dark Souls 2. Scholar of the First Sin. We've come back to the bonfire. Um, and I went in and I fought the Pursuer. And then um, I died. So um, we're going to go and we're going to get those souls back. He was mad that I gave him the beatdown. Forest of Fallen Giants. But... It's, it's good that I died because I forgot to turn on uh, the record. So, um, what you do is you come in the window just like I did. There was an item over here I should point it out that you pick up first. But then you jump in here and you kill that guy. And then you hit the barrel down. And see how it wobbles. You want to... I don't know if it's possible to avoid that explosion or not, but we're going to jump down here. Uh, there's like three dogs down here, and they will just, uh, they will assault you. Um, then you come in the door, and you're going to see my, my souls back there. Um, you come in the door, and open this. And what will happen is the pursuer will appear. So what you do is you have to beat the pursuer again. But like I say, he was mad that we dunked on him in our last episode. So he did his uh, his blue sword of death on me. And it was unfortunate because um, what really needed to happen is what's happening right now. I need to get the old what for. But like I say, it was... Oh, that. that was terrible. Okay, so there's just blue sword of nonsense. And that was the wrong heal item. Oh no! The rage is real, my friends. Oh, and he also does that at this point. So, yeah. But that's my mistake, and I deserve to die because I did not have the right item on my bar. So as a result, you know, I can't blame... I can't blame anyone but myself or what just happened but I did use an effigy and it's always annoying to me when I use an effigy and then turn around and just die right after as is this I don't know how how I exploded and died he, he must have hit one of these barrels But he didn't kill the... Oh, there's a dog that survived. You are the luckiest dog. Right, so back in here. If this takes the next four hours to beat the Pursuer, it won't. But if it does, I don't care. He's dying. I mean, this is just absurd. So open this chest. And when you open the chest, he's going to show up. Now, there's a ring that we're going to want in there. Um... But you don't really have time to grab it without without him hitting you. So dodge that one for sure. Always. I'm I'm hitting that parry too early is the problem. key again is not to get too far away from him. Don't get greedy either. Like I just got right there. And the old what for? Come over and grab this. So you get an effigy, fragrant branch of yore, and a covetous silver serpent ring. Really, it's the ring that we were after. Twinkly Titanite, that's the level of a particular type of weapon. It's different from regular Titanite. But we're going to want to put that ring on. So we're going to take off this blue seal ring. And we're going to put on the covetous silver serpent ring. I think it gives you 10% more souls. Um, on each enemy that you kill. Which is great. Alright, so now that the pursuer has crossed off our list, we can climb up here. We'll be facing him again a couple times. Um, but we can come up here and face this guy. These big guys aren't too much of a problem. They hit really hard with their big halberd if it hits you. 
It's not going to be pleasant, but uh, there you go. Now, once you come this way, you can't get back. So you can't you can't get back to the bonfire. So there's only one way, and it's forward. So um, we want to try to have this work the first time, if at all possible. Uh, this is a descent into death, so don't go that way. We're going to meet an NPC here, and uh, she's Luca Teal, and we're going to be bailing ourselves of their services. Things are better that way. And she's pretty uh, standoffish initially. Uh, and she'll tell you a little bit about herself, and we're going to see her later in our journey. And we'll be able to call her. So next, we're going to go ahead and open this chest and get the antiquated key. That's going to be important for us. Sure. Um, and then go ahead and bow up and bring this guy back. Uh, you want to try to find... Now, there's a lot of cliffs to fall off up here. Um, so you want to be cautious. Uh, so usually I bring him back into the room, but you want to make sure that you find him kind of over here because you don't want to, you don't want him or yourself to hit Lucatiel. Oh, that was the one attack. All right, now. Uh, go ahead and come out here and climb up this this, uh, this ladder. It's a little bit tricky. Please do not fall, my friends. You gotta add your way out here. Oh, I, hate, I hate this so much. Oh. Uh, come out and go ahead and grab large titanite shard. I don't know if you can light this or not. And if you can, I don't know what it does. Um, I'm sure there's a reason for it, but I, like, I don't know it. Go ahead and jump down, take the little tick on your health. Here's a life gem. All right, now, the tricky part here is going to be the guy who's over there. So, I would suggest, um, you know, at the very least, roll through this one. He swings a giant halberd of flames. And um, his giant halberd of flames, if they hit these, they explode. Your lightning, or your lightning, your fire sword will also cause those to explode, and you're not going to have fun. But you need to pull him back here. Now, if you shoot him with the bow, sometimes he will turn around and hit that barrel. It is, it is absolutely essential that he not hit that barrel. Okay. So just kind of come in the area and just sort of be next to him and hope that he doesn't hit that barrel. So that's good. So step one is achieved. Now we just have to kill him. So. And you got to be careful because you will roll off of these ledges. You can roll back here off of this ledge too. It's not, it's not pleasant. All right, now... The tricky thing is we have to have this barrel roll in such a way as to hit that wall and explode. Okay, so you kinda, if you do straight, it kinda doesn't work. So you kinda have to do the angle like I did. And boom, it blows up the wall. And it killed one of these dogs down here too. Two dogs down. He left something, what did he leave? Their effigy. That's great. We're doing we're doing great on the effigies. I'm not going to feel bad about using our next effigy. So go ahead and light the bonfire and come in. And um, you're you're going to want to actually light this bonfire first. So come back out. Toggle. Light the torch and light this torch here. So set that a light. Put your torch away. And then the dull ember that we got, he's going to ask for. So this is Macduff. He is our dude. Oh, I can be all. Mm, yeah, he's. Oh, dear, dear flame. Then I'm Macduff. So 
right now. Calls you an imbecile, but still, give him the dull ember, even though he called you an imbecile. And exhaust his dialogue. You don't need to buy anything right now from him. What you're going to do is you're going to come back out here. You're going to rest. And when you unrest, he is going to be at his anvil doing work. And he's going to do work for us as well. But first, let's rob him of all of his stuff. So large tiny chart there. Go on over here. Grab up night shard there times five we're gonna want to grab up over here craftsman hammer twinkly tight night grab up here the heavy bolt that we're never gonna use grab up here iron arrows times ten and he's gonna be our source of infinite iron arrows He's also going to have other things that we need. So we're going to buy from him the longbow. Because you'll notice it has a scaling. It requires 16 dexterity. So we want to be able to use that. So we're going to buy that. Next, we are going to reinforce. And he doesn't sell any... Um, he doesn't really sell anything else that you'll need. Except large titanite shards. Um, so we'll be able to buy those from him infinitely up here. Uh, repair powder, you should at least have one of. But it's the it's the, the iron arrows that we're going to get from him. They're important. But first, we're going to see about um, reinforcing our weapons. So we can bring this up to, I think, plus four. Uh, we can probably get another large tight knight from him. Get our, get our thing up to plus five. Let's do that. Since it's selling in here, just buy one. That's a lot. Uh, let's just take a let's just take a look and see. Here. Let's reinforce our bow, our long bow. For a minute there, I panicked and thought, oh, it wasn't the long bow that I. Yeah, okay, so we've got our longbow uh, and our sword to what, plus three or plus four? It's pretty good. And now let's um, buy some more iron here. So they're going to be our primary arrows that we're going to use uh, all the way through the game. We don't need, you know, we don't need to get crazy. We'll get another got 33. We'll get like another 120. Um, I wonder if that gives us enough. How terrible I am at the math right now. Does it give us enough for one more of these? It does. Does it give us enough to reinforce an item? No. We need 1050 or 1250. What do we got? We've got 891. Did we pick up any souls? You don't get another pursuer soul when you reach You just have this one. I bet it's not going to be enough. 200. Does that get us enough to level one of the things to another level? Oops. Buy something. Yeah, we can get our bow. Another level. Hooray us. Okay, so things are starting to look juicy. So let us in our juiciness... Shut up. Uh, let us in our juiciness swap out this short bow and put in our long bow. Let's go ahead and put our, our wooden arrows over here and we're going to put our iron arrows there. The iron arrows hit harder, of course, than the wooden arrows. And yeah, that's, that's awesome. So we've, we have freed Macduff. We've got access to Macduff. We're leveling our weapons pretty well. So now we are ready to travel um, back to Majula. And we're going to be moving. I don't think we got any shards, right? New. 
Uh, we're going to be moving. Here's Melancia, by the way. So you can buy infinite life gems from her. You should probably start. Probably, maybe should have gotten some life gems instead of raising it at that level. But that's okay. They're expensive. They're like 300 a piece. But we're ready to start moving into Hyde's Tower of Flame now. Made some progress on our weapons. Also, did I put that point into strength? I did. So we can also move over to use the Drang Lake Shield because that has a, a requirement. It does put us overweight, though. And we're going to be doing some pairing. So we're going to keep on our Iron Palm instead. We're going to do some parrying on the hide knights. So this is where way back when, I think in our first episode, we went down here and picked up the Parma Shield, Crimson Parma Shield, out of the chest. It's right there. So now, um, come down here. Now, I, you know, I'm embarrassed to say how long it took me. It took me a long time to realize that there was a pole right here. I kept thinking, how do I advance in this stupid game? And, uh, yeah, it was obvious. It was really cool. Head on in. Head on over. Grab up the soul of the lost of man. And you're going to step out to here. There's going to be a hide knight right out the door, but do not, do not access him. Do not wake him up. This guy's gonna wake up over here, but run right past him and, and get your bonfire. First and foremost, get the bonfire. Tiny is gonna come on down and he's gonna try to fight you here. Just make sure that you don't roll off the edge. That's pretty much their combo. This isn't the best place to fight. Um, rest again, get your health back, and then start, start the area proper. Oh, he left some crack blue iron. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of him. So they always do the same attack, just stay right on his butt. And it, our, since we leveled our long swords, only taking four hits and they die. Okay, so this guy is the first hide knight there, very fast. You can come in and get a bunch of hits in on him first. And then parry him. You can dodge the parry, of course. Um, and get, or dodge his attack, of course. Um, so you don't have to, again, you don't have to parry in the game. I'm doing some parrying, but uh, parrying is not a requirement. Now, this guy is tough because he's got this big old mace that he's going to swing. And he's got almost like a 360 range on it, which makes it very difficult. So what you got to do is um, you kind of have to go to the go to the mace side. Going a little bit of but you, know, you want to roll on the left of him. Am I fat rolling? I am. How am I fat rolling? Oh, I'm at 71.2. Back on our hard line goes. Oh, we fat roll. Was it hard leather boots? Was that what we were you using before? We're going to eventually need to put some points of vitality. All right, bring this guy up. Now, again, you can roll off all of the edges. That is totally a thing. The guy almost did there. All you got to do is get in your four swings. If there's three attacks, have your Lloyd's Talisman. And then once you kill him, this will, this will come up out of the platform. So pull that lever and look across over there. And what you'll see is there'll be a ring that comes up out of the water and elevates to make it so that you're not going to fight that boss on such a narrow surface. There's going to be a second ring 
outside of that one that we're also going to be able to raise. Um, need to raise to advance the game. Now, coming in here, there are three of the big ones. So the first thing you want to do is come in and get rid of this guy. And the other two guys will start to uh, start to let you have them. So just um, and if you fight this guy over on his side over here, the other guy doesn't come all the way over. He says, oh, that's his area. And he'll go back. I'm always, I'm always a little bit annoyed when I get hit by the They're so slow. All right, so you heard this come out of the ground, which is the second lever that you'll activate through that fog door. Just like that. So we're going to go ahead and take an Estus here to fill up her health. Here's Mr. Sleepy Hide Knight. Go ahead and come up here. To wake up. And bury his business. Boomba. I know I'm making those guys look easy, and they actually aren't that easy. Uh, it's just working out that my parries are on point. Go ahead and wake this guy up down there. He's going to come up the stairs. Because we want what's in that chest down there. Oh, I thought he was going to wander off that ledge. Here. Get parried. Okay. Now there's going to be another giant mace guy down there, but but you don't have to activate him right away. You can come over to the side here. You can make your way across to pick up this very very important ring. So the ring in this chest is the ring of binding. What the Ring of Binding does is, and we'll probably take off this Ring of Restoration with the Ring of Binding here, is it limits the amount of HP that you lose when you die. Um, so you're going to want to, uh, you're going to want to have that on. So if you die over and over and over, your HP goes down to. Uh, 50%. And you can't backstab these guys, by the way. This guy is actually a little bit, it might be harder than the boss we're going to face. Um, so if you die over and over and over, you'll go down to 50% of your HP. Or lap, I can. Um, and uh, when you put on the Ring of Binding, it takes you up to 75% of your so we're going to come in, we're going to face the uh, Dragon Rider. Basically, if you just just have to have your dodge on, go ahead and get a hit or two, dodge. He will swing that thing around and really, again, always pay attention to your stamina. You can see just how hard we're hitting with our, uh, with our fire loss. And he doesn't hit very hard, so... So if we hadn't hit the levers, um, we would only be fighting on this little circle in the middle. So that would not be good. Like I would be falling right now. I just need him to do one more attack. But I can just finish him off just like that. So the Dragon Rider is dead. Go 
ahead and eat his soul. We'll drink an Estus. We're gonna eat his soul up. Yum yum. Om om. Touch the uh, bonfire. We are going to be uh, murdering her. Um, My name is I have come. I can see no. about the cost. No. So you can buy this chime from her. You can also buy a ring that helps with miracles. 28,000 souls, which is absurd. And you can also um, buy miracles from her. We're not going to be doing any miracles. No need for uh, miracles. A faith build is underwhelming in this game. This is in most of the souls games, but you know, what can you do? What we're going to do first is we're going to go and span our souls back in Jubala. And let's see. What are we shooting for here? Let's go ahead and chop down that soul. And the Dragon Rider soul. I think you can get his his halberd, but it costs lot of stats to use. So we'll go ahead and level up. And we're going to see if we can get um, see if we can get adaptability to start making some progress in adaptability. Get that up to nine endurance here. Adaptability is what's going to help you with rolling. It gives you more iframes. It also allows you to heal a lot faster when you drink potion. Drink your Estus Flask, but you need quite a few points of adaptability. But, so we're going to want to dedicate some points there as we go through. Now we have 1,400 more souls. Um, we might as well use those to buy... Um, Buy some, uh, some of these. I don't think so. You know what? I, I think we're gonna go. I think we're gonna go and invest in, in more uh, iron arrows. So back here, this is McDuff's workshop. We're, arrows are going to be part of our game, and and we're doing this because, um, you know, it's no guarantee that you're going to be able to kill Lysia. So, um, again, you don't want to have a necessary amount of souls if you could invest in your character here. So we got quite a few arrows. Of All right, so now we're going to go back with our ten souls that are left. Back to Hyde's Tower of Flame at the top there. And we are going to give her the business. Now, um, if she falls off here, uh, she probably survives. So, we're probably going to have to kill her. You know. It doesn't let you, it doesn't let you target her. Until she decides that you've had enough of your nonsense. Okay, this is not ideal. She might, she might move backwards and die. Falling off the ledge. Don't let her get her chime off. There we go. That's what. Okay, so she is no more. She just died. We're gonna get all of her souls. It turns out to be not so very many. And then if you rest at the bonfire, I don't think you need to travel. Yeah, you just have to rest, and her stuff will show up here. So. Pick up, you get her chime and the rotunda lockstone, which is going to help us turn the rotunda later in the game. So, so that is good. All right, now 
we are able to progress at this point and we're going to want to um, eventually go back into human form in order to progress. But we're at about a half hour, so this is probably a good place to end this episode. So after that success of killing um, Licia, we will uh, see you in our next episode. So thanks for tuning in, everybody, and we will see you then.